Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are the second of May 2023. Today around the table we have myself Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Wait does not here, does not seem to be here. Um, let me share with you the shared notes so you can help me taking notes while I speak too much. I've added the link to the shared notes in the, in the Zoom meeting. You can also find, find them on Stack and IRC. So we also have Stefan Merle, Bruno Varharton, and Kevin Martins. Let's get started with announcements. Uh, the weekly release 2.402. Um, has been released. Is that is that 402? Free, no? Let me check the one we currently have in production. Yes, you are correct. Sorry, that 403. Hello, Mark. Uh, is out. And the packaging worked on the first try. Yes. So the next step, I assume, are next uh, release checklist elements to be done later. But that means it's uh, a green to go for infra CI. The container image has been built. And container is out. Um, is there anything else about the weekly release that you folks want to? Uh, it it needs a merge of the uh, change log there, but th that's various check release checklist items. Okay. You you don't need to list them. They're, they're we know they're on the checklist. Thanks, Mark. Second announcement: uh, update center certificate. Um, since the first of May, the crawler job and the update center job stopped working because. They are one month ahead of the certificate uh, a certificate expiration. So I forgot it was one full month. I took it was one week. So there is an internal safety system that say, oh, one month left. Let's fail with an error. So <laughs> we will need at least for today and tomorrow for a few days until next week to disable, to find a way to disable that check. I'm, Almost sure we can, there is a way on the code uh, until we can renew the certificate. But that was mentioned that we will need, we, we will have plugins that are expected to be released, but not available on the update center since yesterday. So we also we will also have to update job configuration, which is currently six hours floating window to be 48 hours, just to be sure we catch back the deployment. Um, so need to catch back. So yeah, I think a message on status Jenkins IO wouldn't kill as well as an update because we haven't updated the existing elements. I will take care of that if it's okay for you. Plugin releases. Disable the check at least for one week. Um, so that means the tasks start to be more important. Uh, hopefully I tried this morning, I had a virtual coffee with Olivier Vernin and the key he sent me privately after the validation from the board isn't the CA key, but the last year certificate key. So it's a miss. We need Olivier to start again his whole machine on his vault to send to encrypt and send me the new CA key. Otherwise, I won't be able to sign the certificate request from Stefan. But once it's done, that should be easy to solve. One hour of work. Need Olivier to send us the proper key. That's all for that specific topic, but that means update center and crawler, the jobs in charge on trusted CI to generate the update center index and the tools index, you know, these tools, GDK, tools, Maven, that Jenkins can auto install. Uh, the metadata for both these elements are signed by these jobs. So they aren't updated since the last 24 hours. 
a word about Azure maintenances as well. Um, Microsoft is planning a few maintenances during the month of May. So uh, just to let you know, we will have to open issues if we are uh, if some of our services are under these maintenances. I saw an email just before the meeting, but I had two or three on my backlog. That should be end of May or June. So we need a help desk open if there is something to do. No help desk means nothing to do. That was just a note. Finally, a word about the upcoming um, software update campaign, I will call them. Um, the most important one is Ubuntu. Ubuntu 18.04 reaches end of support at the end of the month of May. Okay, so we need to update all of our remaining Ubuntu 18.04 instances. Um, the test we have done and the thing we have in production shows that we shouldn't have a lot of issues. Um, the only exception is the packaging system on PKG Jenkins IO. So I was waiting for the LTS that will happen tomorrow before putting hands dirty. The goal will be to containerize the, to use a Docker container for the packaging steps to provide a proper tool before trying playing around. That will allow us to upgrade the host machine to Ubuntu 20.204. And then we should be able to work on the container version to have a reproducible process for the packaging steps. The main targets are the Red Hat packaging tools. Uh, on Ubuntu 18, we have a specific version that we know that work. On Ubuntu 20, the tool doesn't exist at all. No one was able to run create repo on Ubuntu 20.04. And there is a new version on 22.04, the current LTS that we are targeting, but it's a rewrite from Python to pure C. It's named create repo dash C. So we don't know if it works or not. And we have to spend time on trying to package Jenkins with that new tool. So that one is the most prior. Uh, we should be able to do it before end of May, except for uh, the packaging. So, Damien, yes? there is there is a facility that we could consider purchasing the extended support maintenance from from Canonical. If we say we have to stay on Ubuntu eighteen oh four for a little while longer, uh, I don't know if they offer it for free to open source projects. I doubt it. But but there is a product that extends the life, the, the security support for 18.04, if we really need it. Considering canonical, canonical extended support. Yes, but on the other hand, if we are not able to, to bump a six years old version of our packaging system, we might have other short-term trouble really soon. Right, right. And, and I agree. Good to know. Certainly the reality is, this is unhealthy, right? We need to switch to new packaging. And, and that absolutely we do. But yeah, worth considering if we are stuck or if we don't have the resource. Thanks for sharing. That's right. a good point. And I think that there was an experiment that did switch to using create repo-c, so I'm not overly concerned by it. Uh, same. It's more um, a question of timing. So Kubernetes 1.25, uh, we should be able to do it in June because the end of uh, life for Azure and Digital Ocean for the 1.24 that we have in production today is end of July. So my proposal is that we target the upgrade to, of our cluster to Kubernetes 1.25 to June. Is there any objection to that high level proposal? Let's target June and of life July 2023. Get on the Azure. I wasn't able, I, I didn't search for Amazon, but Amazon are always one version below. Um, there is one new upgrade I wanted to push uh, during the summer or later, but we might need to do it earlier. But the good thing is that it looks it's going to be okay. 
with the uh, uh, one year of cleanup. That's the Puppet 7 version. The reason is that we now have, in less than one month, four Puppet module, which latest version is breaking yeah, uh, because it drops the Puppet 6 support, which is the major version we are using in production. Even though Puppet 6 is still LTS and provide um, a security support from Puppet Labs, they have recently introduced Puppet 8 on the enterprise port. They, are, they should deploy and distribute Puppet 8 for open source soon, but that means we should switch to Puppet 7. Um, the preliminary test, at least on the unit test and Vagrant, shows no problem on that one, whether we are on Ubuntu 18 or 22. So that one should be quite easy, but that will require shutting down the whole Puppet thing. We should not break services, but we will have to do it. It will. It's a slow and careful operation because we have to do it machine by machine. So that's a full day of work and full day one full day of preparation. Um, so I'm not sure when we should be able to do it. There is no emergency. So I propose to do it once Ubuntu 22 is finished. Does it make sense? Any objection? Or do you think Kubernetes 1.25 should be done before? I don't have a strong opinion, so that's why yeah. I'm... No objection asking. from me. After Ubuntu 22 and before Kubernetes 1.25. The reason why I want to mention these high level campaigns is because uh, we haven't updated the Jenkins roadmap since at least one year for the infrastructure, and I will want to update it. And these kind of elements will be really nicely placed on the infrastructure section of the big graphical roadmap. I will share the pull request and the link to you uh, once it will be done. Do you have other announcements? Cool. A word on the topic on next uh, on the calendar. Next week weekly, nine May two thousand twenty three. I expect the version two dot four oh four release not found. Uh, next LTS is tomorrow. Uh, will be third April, no, third May two thousand twenty-three. We expect two three eight seven dot three. Chris Stern is release lead and answered on the Jenkins release channel, uh, and plan he planned to start at four a.m. UTC. To start at four. AM UTC, which means 6 AM for uh, the European uh, Central European timeline, which maps perfectly to the time of us being away because it takes two hours to build the release, a bit more, uh, two hours and 30 minutes. So that means starting at 8, 8 past 30 on the morning on our time, on at the time for Stefan, Bruno, I, and Hervé. Uh, we should have the end of the release and beginning of the package. So if the package fail, that will be morning, beginning of uh, of day for us. I will be there in any case, since I will wake up, start early and finish early. So we are covered. Uh, Hervé and Stefan, if you are around during our morning, just in case that will uh, help me uh, feel safer. No problem. And once it's released, uh, then we can start working on infrastructure again. Any question? Um, next security release known that I'm aware. Nothing on the mailing list. And next major event is the CDCon. Is it 8, 9 May, Mark? That's correct. I'll be there Vancouver. in Vancouver, Canada. Mark and... Mark. And yes, not my fault, we'll also be there. Yes, so Alex and I will see each other and we hope to see Gavin Mogan. Oh, let me hide. 
Okay. Do you have other calendar elements? Okay, none that, that was... None that I know. Sorry. Perfect. One, two, three. Okay, so let's proceed to the work that was done. Um, I will try to be as brief as possible. Uh, on CI Jenkins IO, the bomb builds are now split. So theoretically, and what I saw during the weekend tend to prove uh, that, uh, that assumption, even if you have uh, multiple bomb builds running and waiting or using Kubernetes agents, the other normal builds for plugin developers or other projects are still allocating without waiting. So if you have a bomb pick of build, you won't wait for one to two hours before your build is taken as a plugin developer. That should be a nice improvement. Um, the resource sizing is still the same. We use the same machine size and the bomb build seems to work from operational point of view. Anyway, this weekend I've seen a lot of different infrastructure failure during the bomb builds on master. I saw, but most of these um, errors are not reproducible between two builds. I saw ACP failure due to DNS, temporary DNS resolution failure. I mean, I don't see anything we could do about AWS DNS failing for a few seconds, except hosting our own DNS, not worth the effort. Uh, so some failures on what appears, but I'm not sure of myself there, uh, what appears to be test failure inside the BOM code. So I'm not sure if it was real test issues. That could be because BOM and plugin were updated while working on the infra. If it's related directly to the infra, I'm not sure I can correlate. Uh, the time is a bit more than it used to be, but Again, I'm not sure if it's because of the combination that are increased, the amount of test increased. That's still weird. Uh, but at least we have a value de delivered to CI Jenkins IO. Plugins developers should not have to wait for the bomb builds. Yeah, so there's there, as far as I can tell, there may be, well, I attempted to release a new version of the bomb uh, over the weekend and the build failed. I didn't do the analysis to understand why I just launched one now. And if we're lucky, it will it will pass. And if we're not lucky, it won't pass and we'll diagnose why. The the one you launched this weekend was the failure on DNS resolution. Ah, thank you. Okay, you? so the, clearly a transient failure. We'll hope for the best. Great, thank you. Um, we were able to contain uh, the excessive consumption on two Azure uh, different usages. The first one was because of CI Jenkins IO uh, that had a lot of increased activity during the past two weeks, especially the acceptance test and core IMEM machines. The data we have on Datadog shows that these machines were clearly underused. So we decreased to a half cost machine, same amount of CPU, uh, even if I'm sure we could decrease but uh, twice less memory, 32 gigabyte instead of 64. That's effectively half the cost of the previous instances. So that helped a lot. We'll see if it stay that way. Um, so that's why it has been closed. And the packer builds that was on us, we shifted the one month ago, the pattern we use for the resource group. It's a kind, see that as a namespace or a box containing cloud resources. And we shifted the way we were using them on Packer for security purpose, but we didn't adapt the garbage collector. So effectively, with all the experiment and work and fixes done on the Packer image build, we add, yes, hundreds of virtual machines or associated resource that were dangling inside this. So we have removed these resources and we have added a garbage collector that has been proven to be effective. Uh, that's yeah. That that was a lot of money wasted. So up, we will be more careful next time. Um, thanks, survey for and uh, Stefan for pointing that Puppet Jenkins IO. Thanks to your work on the alerts and the communication in the team, that machine was using a lot of space. Uh, I was able to clean it Saturday. That was easy. Um, they were dangling tar. Uh, archive of the Puppet installation 
that were staying on the machine, they should have been deleted. And one gigabyte per, uh, per archive with free archives duplicated on the root directory and Olivier Vernon's re repository. That was yeah, a lot of gigabytes used for nothing. So removing them and rotating the va vacuuming the journal CTL was okay. Um, so that's okay. We had ground commit permission that was repository permission updater, not direct infrastructure. Thanks, Hervé. Thanks, everyone involved on fixing the crashes on the plugin Jenkins uh, IO website due to the ill score. That has been fixed as far as I can tell and as far as the what you reported, Hervé. Anything you want to add on this one specifically? No. Cool. Having validation issue and pull requests, a uh, new maintainer of a new plugin was discovering uh, uh, all the tasks to do it. Nothing expected from the infrastructure. Um, to summarize, uh, better reading the doc. A login issue on Artifactory. That sounds like a same, same kind of issue, new maintainer, there is a uh, egg and chicken problem when you have an account never connected to Artifactory, uh, but that has been solved. Certificate issues uh, on the CI Jenkins IO machine. We also have a virtual host assets CI Jenkins IO. Uh, as far as I can tell, that domain serve and protect CI Jenkins IO uh, and serve some static assets. Um, we had the same word issue. I think it was. Was it PKG, Mark, or was it another machine? I think it was update Jenkins CI org last week, where the third board uh, system wasn't working. If we, the cron tab was running, but it's in quiet mode and we can't change that, it's part of the puppet module. So we don't have a log on what did it fail or what did it refuse, but it's been weeks since the certificate should have been renewed. That might or might not be consequence of the, the refactor I did in March with the Python version and there were a lot of tangled issues. So the certificate were renewed. We will have to be careful in July for the renewal of this one. Hope it will be fixed uh, with the Ubuntu 2204 upgrade though. That will feature recent version of CertBot. I hope we should be able with this and recent puppets to have this issue fixed. The alternative solution will be to disable the automatic cron tab on the puppet module and write ourselves a shell script that will report or log somewhere. That's a few lines of code, but that's got to be written. Any yeah, question? None for me. We, when we detect those kind of problems, we even if we need to do a, an interactive fix, I'm okay with that. It's only typically once every three months at most. So long as our detection is there, no problem. It's, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, I want to open an issue to track uh, adding SSL uh, age, uh, like the, because uh, you are watching or your system mark is watching this for us. That's really useful, but I think it will be a nice team improvement to move that burden away from your infrastructure or at least rely first as first level of uh, of watching to our Datadog system. There is already a Datadog probe monitoring with alert on CI Jenkins IO. That one always, uh, each time that there is a security advisory on CI Jenkins IO is put down. I don't know if you see, you have two alerts. One that says CI Jenkins IO service is down. And the second say S SSL certificate is less than 30 days. It's a false positive. But that means we have something on Datadog already checking for the age of certificates. I think we should set this up and challenge you, Mark. Next time you see the alert on your own system, we compare with Datadog to see if it's detecting properly. I, I like that. I I think the detection of assets.ci.jenkins.io was more of a happy accident from my detection system than intentional because I don't think that I had ever enabled checking of assets.ci.jenkins.io, I think it was a happy accident that the message was inside another check. And that, that we we don't like happy accidents, right? That's really nice to have them, but we don't like them long-term. Makes sense. Thanks for that, Mark. 
Uh, Hervé, uh, so Hervé, thanks for managing the switch to Mailgun for sending emails of Akon Jenkins uh, CI, uh, no, Akon Jenkins IO. The goal was for us as infrastructure team to have a way to observe and get a status on the sent email for you helping user who said, I never received the email. There are numerous cases, and but we were blind before that change. So thanks, Hervé, for that. Hervé is currently uh, driving the Mailgun port. We still have the old accounts and grid uh, by Kosuke, but as far as Kosuke uh, chat with us, dash, there is only one administrator at a time. Well, with Mailgun, we can be multiple. Uh, we could envision setting up our own send grid on Azure. That will be easier for the access control in the future. But on short term, we use the free Mailgun account. So yeah, Arveda, it sounds like it helped you. Can you confirm? Yes, uh, we have the last five day uh, logs on Mailgun. What uh, remains to be seen is how many emails we are sending each month. Okay. Uh, to be sure we don't uh, go over uh, 100. Uh, when the... Warning, check amount of email. Send per month to stay on the free plan. Um, do you want to set a reminder end of month or maybe weekly for that? Um, yes, when uh, end of month should be should be enough. Oh, I'll I'll put a reminder in two weeks. Yep. Can you add it on the Jenkins infra team? So just in case if you are ill, someone else can can take over. But by default, uh, that sh that should be you since you manage the whole thing. Jenkins infra team. Uh, release of CD event not published to update center. Uh, that was fixed. That was a temporary issue due to RPU failing the build. So switch mail provider to Mailgun. That's what the password reset email was. Let me change that to that one. Thanks for the work on that part, Hervé. Uh, and we had an outage of the CI Kates cluster due to lot of reason we had to recreate from scratch the cluster that went well but that was wasted time for us at least now we have a cluster properly named and now our that that was the uh, opportunity to improve the quad quality of our terraform project for aws so back in line uh, we had also two issues closed with no action uh, one was closed by the requester basil about uh, Say, uh, there was a issue with the CD process on one of his projects inside the Jenkins project, but it's not the case anymore. Thanks, Basil, for cleaning it up. And DigitalOcean confirmed that the brute force SSH attack was not us. <laughs> so we spent time for nothing, but at least we discovered a bit more data dog and the tools in DigitalOcean. So no action expected from us on that area. Any question? Okay, so let's cover the work in progress elements. So element currently on the milestone and let's see if we should keep working on these elements before looking at the new items. So can create account, uh, Hervé, what's the latest status of this one? I haven't checked since this yes, morning. Uh... I've checked his uh, email, their email, but uh, didn't receive anything. I'll probably propose this, this person to use another, uh, a different uh, mail provider. Yeah, good point. To register. Either the check with their administrator again. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've uh, asked that already. Yeah. So. Remind them because most of the time that's uh, people don't want to do that for 
whatever reason, we don't have to care. I don't know if they don't like them or if it's complicated topic or whatever the reason, they have to check with their admin or change the email to be used. There is nothing else we can do about that because maybe their admin have blacklisted the our domain or IPs or I don't know, whatever. So except yeah, if they don't contact them, we won't have anything to show to the admin if we go to their admin ourselves. That's why we need at least them to start the discussion. And if they don't want to contact them, then they will use another. But thanks for managing that because it's not an easy one. Any question? I propose that we keep that one on the current, on the new milestone and wait for the feedback. Sounds okay for you, Hervé? Artifact caching proxies and reliable. So that one, uh, we keep it open because it's a reality. Um, the bomb builds since uh, Friday or Saturday are not using digital ascent anymore, neither for ACP, neither for agents. So the, the issues we saw in digital ascent should be gone because we weren't able to reproduce or to see any case outside the bomb builds. That was a certain threshold of, uh, of request. That means we know there is a limit on the ability of our ACP system, at least on digital ocean, when it starts to not answer properly. There might be fixes, but if we don't need, then let's keep things like that. Uh, so issues on AWS this week though, so we'll have to monitor carefully the bomb builds to see if we don't have the same issue on AWS. Finally, on Azure, it's still stuck. Uh, we need to work on the CI Jenkins Azure migration. Do you have any question or things on that topic? Okay, so we'll keep it open so we can continue watching on it and see the results uh, once everything will be migrated in Azure for the virtual missions. Migrate trusted CI Jenkins IO from AWS EC2 to Azure. Stefan, what's the status yes. for this one? I am uh, almost done with the second VM. If I manage to have the private IP working and uh, I will be able to uh, start for the third one, which is the, the permanent agent and, and, uh, and the, all the setup of the network and the security of the network between the three of them. Next step. Ah, next step is a permanent agent. Cool. Yes. Uh, we, we should be able to, to check. Uh, after the meeting for that part, um, yes. I just realized you can you might want to add an, a private DNS with a record for the to the IP. Using static IP can be complicated, so well, better to use a dynamic with a private DNS record. Okay, that shouldn't block you and should be a viable solution. Okay. Thanks, uh, Stefan. So we keep the this one on the milestone. Sounds okay for you? Oh yes, please. Next step. Hervé, add launchable to agents. So I believe uh, still you need it. Work in progress. Yep, yeah, I have difficulties uh, installing a uh, launchable on the uh, Windows container. I've got uh, somewhat working Python uh, installation, but. Uh, when I try to install Launchable, I have uh, it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't success at uh, finding the setup tool module. Okay, so I believe uh, might need uh, to a bit of help on that area as we discussed this morning. Need yep. per session to unblock uh, but almost there cool thanks for the report anything to add as soon as uh, this install uh, will be good i will be uh, i will be able to propose uh, basil the simplification of the pipeline library so we only need to run the install 
tap uh, each time. With that, and it also will be able. Uh, uh, it also will be available on uh, for Windows build, as it would. Uh, it could be the. Um, the the part where we can gain uh, most of uh, the build time with Launchable. So it's uh, uh, yeah. As soon as it's available, uh, as better it is. Cool. Thanks for the work. Thanks, Basil, for that part as well. Um, CI Jenkins, you use a new virtual machine instance type. Uh, so I've started a, a rough draft locally for setting up a new environment. Uh, that's a mix of what Stefan is doing on Trusted and what used to be done for the current CI Jenkins IO. We have a tag on the Azure project named Legacy TF, which was a set of Terraform code used for most of all the Azure resources. That we removed that but kept the tag because we can. That helps a lot when uh, trying to understand what resource is doing what or listing resources. These plans might not be up to date. That's what I see. Most of the attributes have been changed and some resources doesn't exist anymore. But anyway, mixing both of codes allows me to have, um, let's say, a proper code. So I've also selected the new instance size with a, a bit smaller than the current one because we don't use all of the memory for CI Jenkins IO. That's still 40 bucks per month. It's not a lot, but I mean, we don't need a, we don't need high performance machine if it's not needed. Um, right now, the status for me is naming. And I spent some time carefully reviewing uh, uh, Stefan work to be sure I don't miss anything on the new Terraform provider for Azure. Uh, my main challenge is that uh, we have different cases between trusted and CI. In the case of CI Jenkins IO, uh, that machine will need two network interface, one for public access through HTTP or inbound agents, and that will be exposed through a public IP, and one private interface in the public network to be reached through SSH. So that's subtly different than trusted CI, which is inside the private area behind the SSH bonds machine. Yeah, but that's the way I was starting at the beginning, so you, you may yep. find it. And that, that's uh, one of the points that Tim Yacom made on your pull request, Stefan. Uh, I will want him to discuss a bit more. You want to use a Terraform module for avoid reusing, for providing do not repeat yourself, but I don't see, I don't see the point if it's to say, oh, that will be uh, one if for each case. One if CI or if trusted and or if search CI or if or the machine that we don't have. And maybe team think that I'm a guard in, in Terraform, which is not the case. So I will have to learn how to do that. So lose time just to do the templating. No, that, that won't be lost time, but I yeah, mean, but in that, that would case, take more time. Yeah, the, the, in that case, even the argument of I might be missing something. That's why I want Tim to, to explain a bit more, but I don't see what to reuse. We have three cases. Each case is subtly different. One is fully private, but through VPN. So one only interface for all, cert. CI need two interfaces for two different network. And trusted is fully private, but through SSH machine. The boots, I mean, yes. that's three different cases. So. Uh, we cannot put on the module the network interface. We cannot put the public IP. Um, yeah, eventually data disks. That's data disk and the base of a virtual machine. But the virtual machine don't have the same the same setup. So yeah, if the goal is to write a ten line of a map structure in a local variable for Terraform instead of ten line of Terraform, I don't see the point honestly. But there might be other reason that I'm missing now, and we might change in the future. That's not a problem. With yeah. worst case, we factorize. Uh, what do we have? Migrate application from system pool to Linux pool on private gates. 
Uh, Hervé, Stéphane, we, we saw this one. We have the bots running on the system pool. So we need to add toleration and taints and node selector eventually. Uh, do you think Hervé should be able to work on this before end of week or do you think you have too much to handle? Yeah, I can take this one. I have almost nothing for this week, so yeah. Perfect. Let's add node selector first. And taint toleration later. Why I'm writing this survey, it's because node selector will help you to, to try to create affinity to, an, to the Linux pool. Because if we add taints on the system pool, that might have side effects on the technical systems, such as core DNS or, or the, CNI, the CSI controller. So better starting with node selector uh, to fulfill this one. Then see if we do the same for uh, ingress controller others, or just update everything at the same time. If we had the taint, we had the toleration first on the services. And then once we have done that, increase disk space for system pool on private gates. Um, if you don't mind, I will want to take this one for a specific reason. I don't mind pairing with a. Uh, the two of you or just one of you are doing it alone. It's just because in the Ubuntu 2204 campaign, we have to update the, the system pools. So I will want to create a new system pools, migrate the traffic and then a bump and finally do the update at the end. Because since we have to update system pools, that will be a way to try a new way to update system pools too with a green blue deployment that will avoid any errors in the future. At any moment, we would have uh, uh, two different ones. And the operation will be, instead of changing the disk, will be create a new one, migrate the pods, drain the existing pods, and then remove the old one and recreate it from scratch if needed. OK. Got a try with Ubuntu 22.04 and green-blue deployment. I don't know if it's related, but I remember that we had a problem with the core DNS that the, has two instances in the same. Uh, yes. Cool. Okay. That's on that area as well. That's not right now. Once uh, one survey will be finished with the previous one, we can do one per milestone on that one. But the idea of the green blue deployment is that we would have at during the operation two system pool, two Linux node pool. We might not need that for the other pools since they are for agents, but for this one with web services running within, that should be important to have two at the same time. Uh, migrate Google Analytics. Uh, I need help from Olivier. I forgot about uh, granting me the correct administration. Alternatives are KK or Tyler, which aren't responsive. Uh, past releases sites are taking long time to load. Uh, if you don't mind, I will uh, postpone this one to the milestone after because uh, we won't have too much time to pass on this one. And I will want to work on the Ubuntu before um, because the cases we have are using Ubuntu 18.04 nodes, and the driver on the kernel of Ubuntu is way different for Samba CFS mounts with the new Ubuntu 22. So I would rather upgrade the Ubuntu operating system with the new kernels, see how it behaves for the release and the Get Jenkins IU web service, and then decide if we have to switch to NFS-based PVC or other solution. Any question? Need to update Ubuntu kernel upgrade with better SMB support. Uh, there is a, 
the next make environment and description, either Mark and I have to take care of that. Uh, I will add a message to Alex because he might be waiting for this one. And finally, Hervé, are you still okay to uh, start again planning the public uh, cluster migration? Yeah, sure. I don't remember which service. Can I let you evaluate at your at your own pace and prepare the a plan, battle plan for service by service? Is that okay for you? Yes. Now, new items or items on the backlog that I uh, will want us to to have a look on. Um, Decrease AWS cost, I've updated it. We were able to consume 5K less than last month, which is good, but it's still too much. So uh, the idea here is continuing our efforts. Uh, the, the bill is split half-half between two regions. So the work that Stefan is doing and the update center migration somewhere else would help on the area. On the other uh, area, the, these are directly the builds from CI Jenkins IO. The efforts done by Basil, Jesse, Tim, Mark, and, uh, and uh, Hervé on the bomb builds, I hope these efforts to pay in the month of May to decrease the billing here. I hope so. We'll see in the future. Uh, right now, we are trying to contain this cost, but we need to move the web services parts to decrease the half. Uh, the bill by half. So Stefan, keep continuing on that area. There is no immediate thing for us. We confirmed that what we did on the past weeks was okay, garbage collecting, decreasing instant size. I don't see immediate action for us there. So if it's okay for you, I, we keep that item on the backlog and uh, I plan to close it if we're able to pass uh, below the threshold. Pet upgrade campaign to latest 7.x. So I started some experiments, and this one will be automatically on the new milestone. The goal is to prepare uh, updating Puppet to Puppet 7. Um, I propose to keep it on the backlog and wait for Ubuntu 2204 campaign. Is that okay for everyone, as we stated earlier? Okay. Ubuntu 22.04. IRM 64 virtual machines. So Stefan, we were successful to publish virtual machine images. So the next step is to try one of these images on one of our elements on the workflow. Can I take that for that, uh, that milestone? Do you think you will have time uh, with I would trusted like to have Trusted and something else if I'm bumping my yep. head on the wall. No problem. <laughs> Uh, so the first step you will have is to select which job on Infra CI could be a good candidate for Try. using RM64 and then start using it. Okay. Uh, my recommendation is to look at the job using something, a, tool, a set of tools built in Go. So Terraform or Kubernetes jobs could be a good thing. Packer itself could be really good to try. That could be a nice first step. I will I will go for for Picker. That's yeah. the best way. Uh, job in infra.ci to test with IRM. Okay. Uh, yeah. That so adding to the next milestone then. Thank you. Renew update center certificate definitively going to the next milestone. <laughs> so, uh, because what we said earlier. PKG origin Jenkins SAIO Puppet keeps updating the GPG. That one stays in the backlog. It's really annoying to be spammed by the Puppet agent, but I won't have time to spend on this one. Ubuntu 2204 campaign is not on the backlog anymore. Um, as you're billing on CI Jenkins SAIO, I will keep it on the milestone just uh, for me to do two things. 
summarize the whole month of April in terms of outbound bandwidth cost day by day to see if we saw an increase, decrease, or if it stayed the same since we enabled the S3 artifact manager. And uh, what I did just before the meeting, I'm adding a reminder once a week for the whole month to check for cloud cost on at least Azure, and I believe also on AWS. We can clearly improve with the alerting system and everything, but need to check these elements because they are costing us a lot. Migrate update Jenkins IO to another cloud. That one will allow us to work on the AWS cost. Uh, right now, delaying it uh, of one milestone, I want uh, to focus on CI Jenkins IO in Azure first. So this one stay on backlog. Use WebSocket for agent if one of you is bored. You could start working on that. The goal is to enable WebSocket on the Apache server for CI Jenkins IO and experiment on whatever pod template, experimental pod template you want to use WebSocket instead of TCP. You know that you can take it if you're interested. I'm um, not adding that on the milestone, but you can keep it if you're bored. One last element, as per Mark, last log analysis for the GFrog, we are still consuming way more than expected. It's below, it's still way less than the month before. At least we're able to gain 10 terabytes, but still there isn't any obvious way of blocking an IP or doing something. Uh, the good news is that, uh, so first, uh, we expect to check carefully the logs sent by GFrog and see if there are any issue on the logs or on the way we calculate the outbound bandwidth and check with GFrog if the current state is okay for them or not. In the event, if they want us to enable authentication on the non-release repositories, uh, I've successfully started a high availability LDAP instance on bare metal on my own this weekend. Uh, there is a, an out-of-box protocol inside LDAP since a few years now named Sync Repl that allows different patterns for replication, master to read, a multiple master, that's quite useful, and you can have full replica or delta replica. Right now, I'm targeting a multi-master one with full replica because we don't have a lot of data and the frequency of update is really low in our case on our LDAP. Uh, and it's way easier to handle, especially inside uh, in a Kubernetes world, because we could just scale horizontally the LDAP instead of having uh, write and read uh, systems. Uh, so we are the, the rate at which we change the data is not enough for us to risk losing data when there is a network partition. We are clearly far away from the, the limits of this system. So that would help us a lot, especially uh, with the PVC that is slowing down the stop and start of the container. In that case, we should we could, should be able to keep one PVC per instance, and we we should be able to operate the cluster without any downtime for the LDAP. That would add a safeguard if we need to enable authentication from GFrog. Here we are. Um, do you have, before we check the latest non triage issue, do you have topics that you will want to work on the milestone that I forget to speak about? Okay, no topic. So then moving to the issue, let's look on the recent issues. We had find a way for to avoid non expirable missing update center, support Linux for running VM. So thanks, James, for opening that issue. Uh, we had a private discussion about, uh, there, are, there are at least two projects. I think these both are plugins. Yes, two Jenkins plugin, which build process uh, needs to run the Maven and Java command on the Windows hosts, and they require to execute Docker command from that Windows host to a Linux uh, container enabled Docker. We don't have this in the infrastructure today. That's a legit um, 
that's a legit requirement. I don't say we have to work on it now. The thing is we are, there is a discrepancy today. De most of the developers are using a Windows 10 or own system with Docker desktop. And Docker desktop is able to switch from Windows container to a Linux container. Um, the downside is that in our case, we use only Windows server because we have to work on this on headless system. So yeah, the question, uh, I've tried to summarize the different choices we have. None of this choice is obviously better than the others, but each one has its pro and cons. I will want to hear a feedback. Right now, with the help of JC, we were able to, to improve failure detection for these plugins. So these plugins are now building properly on Windows machine. And if it detects that it's on Windows, then it won't try to run a Docker a Linux container on this one for now. But yeah, they, may, they, they have a legit cases. Uh, we have different solution that will require adding a Windows 11 template on Packer that could either be next to the existing or a new one. Uh, the problem is for ACI or Kubernetes container, there is no base OS container for Windows for Windows 11. So that need to maintain both a Windows server for container and Windows 11 for virtual machine. That, that's quite the effort. Um, I personally like the, the WSL uh, ID. Maybe we could have WSL installed by default on the Windows machine. And if this plugin want to uh, to use Docker Linux, they could uh, start a, a WSL engine that will provide Docker inside Ubuntu and they should be able to bind both. But that's still a lot of effort. So yeah, that might need specific work right now. I asked yeah, the much... Sorry. Yeah. Go Sorry, go ahead. Does it concern a lot of plugins? And um, if not, shouldn't this plugin get the custom Jenkins file instead of adding all of this complexity in our pipeline library? Does it force it? Is um, it a, a concrete need? Yes, yes, there is. Not a lot. That's that's not an edge. I, I don't know what your definition of edge case is. It's a legit case that happened. Uh, for one of the most important is uh, people running agent on Windows and they uh, they use Docker, uh, Docker pipeline workflow. And they have their Windows machine, standard machine with the GVM running the agent because that's the way it works with a Windows system that stored the inbound agent process. And they have a WSL uh, Linux uh, machine. And you need to test the case of when the agent runs uh, on Windows machine and need to start a container with a Linux case. We need to test this element, especially for the file path conversion between both OSs, between the container agent and the host machine. These are real use cases. We don't have a lot and it's not high priority, but we need test for these elements. Unit test cannot allow that and you need integration or acceptance test for that. These are exotic case. I, so that's why that's a legit use case. It's not priority because we weren't able to run this, this test until today, but still uh, increasing the coverage on that area wouldn't kill. Alas, the solution proposed by James, that's really nice of him. I uh, shared with us the switch daemon, but that's a specific feature of Docker Desktop. Hence my proposal to use the Docker Desktop on Windows 11. Because of course you cannot install it on Windows Server. <laughs> Would have been too easy then, otherwise. But we can install Windows 11. On Which virtual machines, yes. 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 Azure provide a way to have a Windows 11 virtual machines. Okay. Are you sure? Oh, because I'm running a virtual machine of Windows Server with the engine installed on it. Okay. Can you repeat? I'm not sure I understand. I've run uh, for my experiment for Ansible. Mm -hmm. I've created a Windows Server virtual machine. Mm -hmm. and I have a, I have installed the 
Cœur desktop, ton it. Did it work? Because it's working, yes. Okay, my information about good Docker desktop come from the person packaging Docker desktop that told me it's not supported. So, okay, so yeah. let's, I, I mean, I don't mind. We we could try instead of Docker C, we could add Docker desktop. We have chocolatey. There is a package for Docker desktop on chocolatey. That won't kill trying if it works. Worst case, we still know how to install Docker CE, so we can always go back to Docker CE at any moment. That could be good news. I didn't try because when the person in charge of packaging and oh, application sure, tells sure. you we yeah. don't support that, I mean, I, I won't even yeah. try. I trust them, right? But but maybe it's just their QA system that say- I didn't uh, use that on uh, that, right? Yeah, and, uh, so uh, th that's a good point. And thanks for sharing. And I think we should absolutely try. Uh, I could also try now this uh, command he gave, so. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah. See, good point. Uh, we good can point. See that later. Just a point. Keep in mind that it's interactive versus non-interactive. So what oh, you sure. can do interactively, we are not skilled enough on the Windows area to easily make it non-interactive like we do on Linux. So that, that that's I spent some time last month. You are you spend some time on launchable ports. So Docker desktop is another order of magnitude in terms of complexity. But yeah, if it works. Please add a comment on the issue because we could then try something with this. Thanks for the feedback, Ray. I'm removing the triage and I'm adding that to the Infra Team Sync next. Um, next one, find a way to avoid non expirable access for the update center certificates. For that one, oh, just a minute. Sorry. Um, so there, there has been a, a misunderstanding. Vadek talked that we had to share uh, the, the key for the certificate for 10 years, but it's a certificate authority. However, most of these pain of his points remain. And uh, you want to start a discussion about what would be the threat model that led to a 10 year valid CA to validate on Jenkins core side, the metadata from the update center with a one year or six month rotated certificate for update center. There might be other solution that could be valid or invalid, but the goal is to reassess the threat model to validate or change uh, how it's implemented inside Jenkins itself. Um, so no action expected from us here except uh, keep keep the discussion ongoing. That might switch to a GEP though. Uh, that's why I'm removing the triage, but no action expected from us, so no milestone here. Looks good for you. And the third triage issue, I'm not sure to understand everything here. I will uh, assign this one to Mark. I understand that uh, we have spare distribution uh, line mainline version update center file created when the update center generates its index. And when we have plugin released under a new LTS version, uh, that one is created. It's not created when the version, the core version is released. It's created after a given release, weekly or LTS of the core. When a new plugin is released, that new plugin is the first to say, hey, I've been released under that maximum version of Jenkins. That explained the discrepancy that uh, Alex quoted on the update center files. So as per Mark, there is no action expected here for us. I will remove the triage and assign that to Mark. And uh, I just want Mark to be sure that it's okay and there isn't something hidden behind for us. If it's okay for you, we'll add this to the current milestone that might be closed with nothing to do. So we don't lose track of this one. Is that okay for you?
I don't have other issues, no new issues, no element. Do you have something else or are we able to close? Okay. Cool, so before closing, I just see a new message. Hello, Binyan. Hello guys, I'm reading aloud the message you just posted. I'm new to Jenkins and want to contribute to Jenkins on Frack. Can you share me some resources to get started? I would suggest, uh, uh, hello, Vinian. I would suggest you to post your questions on community.jenkins.io and maybe Adrian uh, will be able to help you uh, clarify some parts and progress from there. We as Infra team won't really be able to help you about health scoring plugin code. We don't really work on the code, but more on the infrastructure side. Uh, Binyan depend on also on which kind of skills you want to, to grow or learn and what you already know to do. Are you at ease with virtual machine management, with fleet management on Kubernetes, on Terraform project, other, other things? You want to enhance your programming skills, yes, then uh, Hervé's uh, tip is the best because uh, yeah, we don't code a lot of Java. That's infrastructure layer. That's what we do. So if it's okay for you, I will. I would yeah. Follow what Hervé said. Open, open a topic on community Jenkins IO. You will have plenty of mentors here that will help you on the Java area for specific programming skills. Does it answer your questions? One, two, three. Okay, not sure if you heard us. So thanks for asking, Vignan. I don't know if you can hear us, but yeah, as Hervé said, yeah. Yeah, but. Vignan, do you mind switching your audio on so that will be easier for us to follow? Okay. So yeah, as Hervé said, then we recommend you to start with community Jenkins IO uh, for working on programming skills because the infrastructure weekly meeting that you have here is only for the Jenkins public infrastructure. So we are not specifically programmers. Don't think we can hear you. Doesn't don't hesitate to mention our names on the topic you are uh, you are opening on community. That will be easier. And if you don't have answer back or no valid answer, don't hesitate to come back to the meeting next week then. Okay for you. No objection. Okay, I'm gonna. Stop sharing my screen. Cool. So you did right to ask the question, Vignan. That's a good way to start at the first step. So welcome to the community. I hope you will find what you expect. Um, and see you uh, see you uh, on the upcoming days or month. For everyone, I'm gonna stop recording. So for everyone watching us, see you next week. Bye bye.